What's up everyone? Let me introduce you to my good friend Don. Don and I go way, way, way back. Way back. We're Hi talking guys. about grade nine, high school days, St. Mary's walking down those corridors. <laughs> A lot of funny moments, but we're not going to talk about that today. Uh, Dawn is an incredible, incredible model in Toronto. She's an influencer as well, and she's been really kicking ass in the city, not only on social media, but also as a frontline worker. She's a nurse, and she's really helping to keep a lot of people in Canada and Ontario safe. And, uh, so thank you, Donnie. Thank you. <laughs> um, so today's video, uh, I thought about doing a portrait session with some natural lighting. And I was looking at Dawn's images and it really got me excited because she loves natural, natural light. Love natural light. I think it's sometimes very flattering and it really allows you to create an interesting mood in your images. And uh, so that's something that we want to really kind of, we discussed about working on. And so today is just really about exploring the ways that I would photograph a model in a studio space. We're currently at Mint Room Studios in downtown Toronto. It's an incredible space. If you're ever in Toronto, I highly recommend you guys check it out. There's several different rooms, all with a different aesthetic. And this is kind of very dawn aesthetic this right is, now. This is my aesthetic right here. <laughs> Sitting on a vintage couch. Uh, but yeah, just want you guys to take a look and see the process that I take when working with a model. And then kind of go into the post-production process and show you little tips and tricks that you can apply to your images to really make them pop. I'm excited to work with you. Make me look beautiful. She's already beautiful, guys. <laughs> Let's get it rolling. Whenever you're working with a model, it's very important to find different items for them to interact with. And depending on the actual structure itself, so if it's a taller structure, if it's a shorter structure, you can utilize it to really expand the model's height and really play with the juxtaposition of the object. Uh, so I want Don, if you can come here, I just want you to interact with the sculpture. And very simple methods. I mean, the whole idea is that this thing is built with stone. I mean, it's not, it's very uh, kind of uh, unstable but just light interactions and light poses that will make it feel a lot more feminine, which is what I want to kind of see. And I'm going to go from a distance and I'm going to shoot upwards so I can give you more length. And when you're shooting with a model, it's very important for you to focus on that because every model wants to look much, much taller. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a huge sucker for framing. And by framing, what I mean is putting objects in front of your, your camera lens that creates some sort of frame. And here there's an opening in this vase that I'm really enjoying and it's creating this really cool kind of uh, circular um, you know, frame around her as I'm, as I'm kind of photographing. You can probably see it better on my screen here, but it's really, really nice because you get that blur and I'm shooting with a 35 millimeter and I'm currently shooting at f1.4. I really like this whole that. position right here with the V-line. You know what's really nice is when you can create you know, like a gentleness okay. in an image, right? And it's all based on like touch and like super simple like m methods of just communicating with an object. Um, so which is why like something like this is so strong as an image, even though you're not really doing anything, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So the one thing I want is for you further back from here. From him, just like there, yeah. And then there you go. So the benefit of working in studio spaces that are very like high ceiling and have a lot of windows is when they have curtains like this, they're amazing opportunities to get really nice natural soft light on the skin. Uh, they act as a diffuser, which is great. So you're not getting really like, um, you know, that that really nasty light that you get on your face sometimes. And you're like, wait, this is way too much. Uh, but I want to kind of utilize these and play around with them a little bit and uh, your model can interact with items. Don't be afraid to like tell your, you know, your model, be like, hey, listen, I want you to move around, but really entertain the space. Um, so this is a really nice fabric and I'm sure that we can get some cool shots out of it. Alright guys, uh, we're just on a little break right now, but I want to talk to you a little bit about my thought process when it comes to actually doing portraits and planning for them. So 
Obviously I rented a studio space for this and it's very important as a photographer if you're beginning to experiment not only in the outdoors with natural lighting but also indoors and utilizing natural lighting inside of spaces. Um, and it's important for you to tell your model to be ready and you know have a kind of a mood board set out so that they have something to go off of before you know arriving on location and kind of being surprised by the elements. So before coming here, I sent Don various different images of the studio space. We coordinated certain outfits that we think would work for the space itself. But there's always the importance of bringing extra items just in case you know you come in here and she might be wearing a beige outfit and she just blends in and hides in the couch. We don't want that. We want there to be some sort of contrast between her and the elements in within the studio. Other things to really focus about is how you're preparing, the type of gear you're bringing with you. So obviously we're focusing on natural lighting, but we also brought artificial lighting just as, a, as an element in case we need it. Um, but not in terms of flash, but more consistent light. Um, and in terms of actual camera gear, we brought with us uh, three, three or four different lenses. We brought a 16 to 35, so for wider angle shots. We brought a 35 millimeter, which is uh, what I've been using predominantly because of its beautiful uh, sharpness and its very low aperture. Uh, we're 24 to 70, a 16 millimeter um, for extra, extra wide shots. Um, it's important to just bring as many different options as you can in terms of gear, just because you want to kind of get your, you know, a good understanding of how the model is going to work within the space and the type of shots that you want, and to also play around and, and have the flexibility in different angles and compositions. Uh, other things to really think about is that when you're within the space and you're shooting a model, it's very important for you to be interactive. Uh, talk to your model, you know, guide them, give them the expressions that you want to see. I actually sometimes go and I pose, and it's hilarious to watch, but you gotta sometimes demonstrate what you want your model to do. And that conversation and that communication is super key. And within the space itself, you also wanna be able to move things around. Don't feel like everything has to be structured. This is the one thing I is a pet peeve in a lot of photos I see is that people don't like to move things around and organize things so that it, it favors the actual image and it favors the model itself. So don't be afraid to really get your hands dirty, think about what you're doing, plan out your shoot, and communicate as best as you can with the model. All right guys, we are in room number two, outfit number two. This is called the library. Uh, it's a pretty neat space. A lot of darker kind of, uh, I guess, furniture pieces and it's very elegant, it's a sophisticated room. So I think here we just want to kind of give her that whole sophisticated vibe, very elegant vibe. Not that you're not. <laughs> no, not that yeah, you're not. I am. Um, but things to look for here is just the way that light is reflecting off of things um, because it is a darker space. You want to make sure that you're really controlling your settings on your camera properly and also just really focus on the way that you're composing your images. You want to make sure that you're highlighting some key elements in the room while also making sure that the model looks the best that they can. Alright guys, since we have this incredible library, I thought it'd be a really cool shot to get Dawn sitting on this couch and just like reading, but at the same time there'll be like some books floating around her. Now obviously I can't do that on my own. We're gonna need an extra hand, so Maori is gonna have to put down the camera and assist us for this, but it's a very simple shot. We're using a lot of positioning here just to really kind of give more depth of field. So the books would be hanging around her kind of like this, and another one in the background, and I'll just be shooting directly towards her. So let's get set up, I guess. thing about natural light is that when it enters a space you can really use it to not only reflect but you can create shadows and play with it in terms of lining and stuff so this chair right here um, the light is coming in and it's kind of creating these really unique patterns on her face so I'm going to shoot through it and uh, try to concentrate on that contrast between the light and the, the darker spots that it's uh, projecting on her face so 
It's gonna be fun. All right guys, we're completely done with the photography portion of this video. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. Love you. This girl's a sweetheart. I, I highly recommend you guys check her out, follow her, give her lots of love. Uh, and I can't wait to show you guys kind of the editing process that I take for editing portraits. Um, really focusing on those details that we kind of showed you in the video um, in terms of composition, really on the perspective that you're trying to gain and telling a story, which is very important. I think it's really about composing an element of emotion in your images and being able to articulate that through your editing. So I'm gonna jump in my car and go straight home, make myself a coffee and start editing. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take their next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, and so much more. This holiday season, give a gift that means more. Get creative and learn how to make that perfect handmade gift. Or better yet, master the art of portraiture using Skillshare's many online tutorials. I've been a Skillshare member since 2016 and have taken the opportunity to learn from other creatives out there different ways to expand my creative skills and learn new techniques to better my storytelling process. One of the most daunting yet rewarding skills to develop as a photographer is the expression of portraiture, capturing feeling, emotion, and the unique characteristics of your subject. Thankfully, on Skillshare, you can find many talented creatives showcasing their step-by-step -step process. Some of my favorites include One Light Setup by Justin Bridges, Working with Natural Light by Benjamin Heath, or Dynamic Portrait Photography by Desimona Dallas. Each creator will walk you through their step-by-step -step process, taking the time to thoroughly explain their techniques and decisions. You'll figure out how to work with a single artificial light source, or better yet, natural light. It doesn't just stop there. As a member, you also get access to unlimited supply of inspiring classes. Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link in the description below a free trial of their premium membership so you can get out there and truly explore your creativity. Don't wait, learn something new today. All right guys, now that we're back at my place, I took some time and I went through all the images and collected some of my favorites of Dawn. Now throughout the process of editing, I was really thinking to myself, what are the most important and noteworthy details that I want to share with you when it comes to photographing and editing your portraits? I came up with three very important items that I think you shouldn't overlook. But to begin, here are some of the photos that we took today. Number one, as one of the most important elements when you're taking portraits is eye contact. When you're photographing your subject, it's super important for you to focus on their expression and more importantly, their eyes. Their eyes are the key to the soul and quite frankly, that is a very true statement. They showcase your emotion and provide feeling. When you photograph, mention to your model that you want to see different expressions so you can figure out what will look best. Now when it comes to editing your photos, you want to make sure that you take the time to thoroughly touch up and enhance the eyes of your model. It will drastically make your image pop. Another item that is super important to focus on is skin. You have to prepare your model from the start. You should be able to direct your model and tell them what attire to wear and choose the location that would fit best with their skin tone. I've seen many photographers in the past get to a shoot and be surprised by what their model's wearing. Sometimes they wear something that blends entirely with the background, which makes it difficult to see the model, or it just doesn't complement their skin tone. So be sure to direct what your model wears beforehand and make sure it fits well with the surrounding location. Now when it comes to editing, however, it's important to color grade your images without compromising the skin. You want the skin to be super natural and for your model to pop out as much as possible. Understanding complexion is a very crucial part here, so be sure to take your time when you're doing your edits. The last thing that I think that everyone should really focus on is compose, compose, compose. And what I mean by that is that when you begin to photograph your model, it's super important to be flexible with your surrounding, to stage as many options as possible, and to utilize the setup. Changing locations, moving the model around, and bringing in objects where possible. 
these things will help you tell a more believable story. Now when it comes to editing, you want to give thought to the elements that are displayed in your image. Not just the model, sometimes this means editing several ways in order to get the best look that will fit the entirety of the image. So that's all for today's video guys. I'll continue the series on portrait photography and hopefully share with you more techniques. But for now, this is a great start. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys all next week.